welcome to our next immigration vlog and this one is actually from Canada so the previous one we ended with some champagne that uh, shot up my nose at least we started so I thought <laughs> let's try and start this one with uh, <laughs> a different kind of champagne and uh, yeah do you want to tell us about this no this is new um, and it's just sparkling wine it's Gewürztraminer, which I love. Um, it's got a Turkish delight taste to it. But this one's just um, filled with sparkles, bubbles. And then, of course, we... Uh, can I open it? Hey, go for it. Just keep it up, right? And, um, of... These things can be dangerous. <laughs> of course, it can go up my nose. <laughs> and, of course, uh, we don't have the most best, the best perfect champagne glasses, sparkling wine glasses. God, actually, this is, we've got no champagne glasses. This is like... Because we're in a tiny home. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, welcome to Canada, love. Yeah. Thank you very much. Welcome to Canada. And uh, we made it. Wow. It's been a week. We've been here almost a week. Tomorrow we'll be here one week. And uh, the last video we made, we just got our work permits, our visas at least. Yeah. Visas and work. Yeah. Visas. So let's see. Anyway. Let's take you guys from the last week in South Africa, the travel, and then the first week in Canada. Cool. Yeah, so it's going to be, I don't know, maybe it's a long episode. It was maybe a wild not. ride, it and you never know how wild it's going to be before you're on that roller coaster getting out of the country. So um, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's. <laughs> you it's, never know exactly how it's, wild it's going to be. It's wild. So anyway, it's busy, busy time. It's like non stop, just non stop. So let's start with South Africa, maybe. Mm. When we were, I mean, after that video, we packed up like maniacs. Like maniacs. And I had already been packing for nine weeks before that. I had already packed about 55 boxes at that stage, but just wrapping up every small little detail. And we even managed to find five boxes in our garage that was full of stuff that we had forgotten about. <laughs> From our previous meeting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> from my previous move yeah so uh moving house i think that's the most stressful thing it was if you get someone to pack it for you it's it's fine you're probably going to take like i reckon 50 percent of the stress of immigration Definitely. you'll take away if Definitely. you just outsource your move your packing mm, of your house if you do it is yeah. way more expensive but um it will take off a massive load of stress yeah. The, the other source of stress is just to finalize a flip file full of your documents that you had received over months. So if that's a, a good piece of advice that I can give you for also a less, a, a more stress-free process getting into Canada would be as, as soon as you get some other document that they say, keep this letter and show it to the officer, print it out for every single person mm. and put it in a flip file because we had to go back and we had printed a lot of them but we had to go back and find some or, or some of those things and then another piece of good advice is you've got to have it printed mm. um i saw people come into the immigration office um saying this is my passport and here on my phone is my letter and she said i need that printed please um and i heard of other people as well who had to have lots of documents uh, printed I'd rather be on the safe side and just print double of yeah, everything into double. separate flip files keep one with you to show and if that gets lost somehow mm. you've got another one in your check baggage yeah so have two copies two copies of everything and then uh, keep it separate i think is a great idea and uh online i suppose online i mean we have scans of absolutely everything we've scanned everything that's in. great as well and so if anything was to get lost were to get lost we would do have digital digital copies of everything and everywhere you go there is wi-fi so uh, on every single airport yeah, they've the got airports, yeah. free wi-fi yeah. if you really need to access those on whatever yeah. cloud storage that you've got or your, even your emails we ended up emailing it too yes yeah, so i don't know about printing but uh here come john great the neighbors here will talk to you guys in a bit so we're back and uh, let's talk about our travel maybe okay so, so we backed up the house and uh, i'm in renewable energy i think i did put that in one of the previous videos so i collected a bunch of boxes over the the last few months of all the renewable energy products i use because they're sturdy and 
they're all the same size so otherwise just buy boxes from a moving company there's a place around the corner mm. from us called box box it's a box man or something mm. and you can buy moving boxes um we checked if it's the right size in centimeters that the that the air no no that's the that's the traveling boxes we'll talk about that now okay, we'll yeah do that. so anyway so in terms of packing the house up i mean you pack the house up so anyway it's a, it's a lot of packing and uh, there's probably five times more stuff in your house than you think so just be aware of that when you start that is the honest truth yeah. and you have to if you come to canada you have to make an inventory a list on a, an official we made a list on an excel sheet and that was not sufficient um you've got to find what they call a list of goods um and it's an official mm. from the official website I'll, and then you fill in that yeah i'll link that in the in the description but that's uh yeah it's apparently there's a list so anyway but can i add one more thing yes whatever we packed that was technological we took a photo of the tag on it or the etiquette on it the serial, with the serial numbers, numbers yeah. um just in case and we referred when we made a list of it we referred back to those pictures and i think um yeah i think it, it's going to help us to be able to prove that it's our things and to prove what is in our boxes yeah you've got to so, so look it's all duty free um but, but you still have to supply but it. you have to declare it so i'm bringing this and this and this in and i'm you know this is the value of these things mm. and so i mean we'll, we'll probably once our container arrives and we go through that process we can make another video mm. on that i think so so anyway so so we took our whole house and we put it in the storage garage and uh, we will once we know that we have a place to keep it this side we'll actually then get that container shipped from that side to here and then we'll unload it on this side um it was a mission it was a mission and so so what uh, maybe just so there's two things i had i had crates made for the piano and also for my computer so you'll see i make i built a pretty interesting computer and uh yeah so i had a special crate made for that because i actually want to fly that earlier so maybe like in a week or two's time i'll have that flown over here and uh because i use that for video editing and this one, this video, I'm going to edit on my iPad. And I think it's going to be a struggle, to be honest. And then the other thing that they are very particular about is getting um, pictures of your jewelry and getting it certified, whatever is really of value, to get it um, certified by a jeweler. Jeweler, yeah, yeah. So I I don't have much that's really of value. Evaluated, not certified. Evalu you have to get yeah. evaluated, that's right. But I've got yeah. three items um, that I would need to get, you know, if you've got certificates for it somewhere, but we couldn't find those certificates except for one. So that's something they're really sticky about. And, and, and just for a backup, just take photographs of it. So I packed it out on the bed and I took a photo of it before I packed it. Yeah. Okay, so now we've packed up a house. Now we are ready to fly. So we flew with KLM and... Uh, it's a great airline at a very affordable cost and well, it was a direct flight we, we except got, for one stop of an hour and a half. Yeah, so, 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 we, good. so we chose KLM because we initially... I mean, the idea was that our dog was going to fly with us um, and uh, the KLM is one of the best pet friendly flying airlines um anyways they're obviously servicing our country i don't know maybe they don't fly to your country which obviously then doesn't work for you but for south africa it's a, it's a pretty good flight and it's a it's a direct flight up and like you know said the stopover is really short so the whole reason behind it for us was that the stopover we don't want our dog to be in too long a transit so we don't want him to i mean we don't want to sit six hours here and then another flight and another flight so, okay, so, so we don't want our dog to be in transit too long. So that's the whole reason we went with KLM, because they had quite a short stopover. And then once we started looking for flights, so once we got our, our passports in hand, we started looking at flights, and we got an uh, incredibly cheap flight flying out of Johannesburg. Um, the dates around it, before and after, were quite expensive. So there was literally there's just that one day that was... Affordable. Yeah, it was, it was super affordable. It was incredibly cheap. Um, but then to our disappointment, but it's actually, it's, a, it's definitely a blessing in disguise is, um, we found out that our dog can't fly with us from Johannesburg because Johannesburg, I think it's because of COVID, I'm not sure, but they don't handle animals as check baggage. So, 
So if we take our dog with us as check baggage, it was going to be 200 euro to have him fly with us on the flight. And then we just load him on this side and offload him on the That's other side. That's by far the cheaper and the easiest. Yeah, because it's the same. I mean, the transit time for him is the least, basically. So, yeah, so we were quite disappointed to find out that we can't take him like that. Um, so then we had to, well, then, okay, so then, yeah, then we flew on our own, basically. And now I'm going to have to ship him via cargo, via a pet carrier or pet handler. Just shy yeah. of $3,000. Yeah. So it's like it's a pretty expensive all of a sudden. And that's a cheap option. Yeah, and that's the cheapest. <laughs> that's not yeah. a luxurious option. So, so the quotes I got was between three thousand and six thousand dollars to uh, to ship him. So uh, I mean, we only paid about four four thousand dollars for all five of us to fly. So <laughs> so now anyway, so that's coming. Um, all right, so, so KLM, we flew with KLM, very nice. The flight up to Johannesburg was really, up to Johannesburg, to Amsterdam, was really easy. Uh, it was quite empty, actually. Yes. It was quite empty, and, and you guys could all sleep comfortably. Yes. I could not, because I'm tall, and uh, I don't fit in airline seats, and I also don't fit on three seats on my side. So I tried, but it was hard. So anyway, so I, I slept great. I slept six hours in total, three hours and three hours, because we ended up having such a half full flight that um, between me and one of our children, we shared four seats in a row. So I just stretched out and she lay in a comfortable position and we had a good, nice rest. Yeah, so I tried that and I, I can't, I can't fit. I can't fit on three seats with my legs hanging off and it's just not a no, I mean, no. Maybe you can. That's a great thing. Yeah, anyway, so if you're tall and big, it's not fun ever on an airline. Okay. Anyway, it's, I'm over it. Fine. Okay. Um, so it was get, a good flight. The kids went. It was uh, a good flight, yeah. We took lots of activities for the kids and, and so many people gave us small gifts which were snacks and activities that we actually overloaded their bags with so many activities, activity books and things that they never looked at because they loved watching some movies, um, kids' movies. They've got a great movie channel, well, kids' channel, yeah. which is, uh, well, I just told them don't watch that and that, but for the rest, mm. I was fine with them watching. Yeah, the they were, they were, that's good. Anyway, so, so, yeah, so the kids had an easy flight, of course. And uh, okay, then we then we had a changeover in Amsterdam, getting on a flight to Vancouver. Now, with the current travel restrictions in Canada, they checked your eligibility papers on on in Amsterdam Schiphol. and Schiphol before you got onto the plane. So the flight, so so an hour before boarding, we got there about an hour or forty five mm. minutes or so before boarding or before takeoff. Before so, takeoff. Before takeoff. So boarding, I think, opens an hour before the flight. But they only opened it 15 minutes before the flight. Oh, did they? They did. Uh, and then they had okay. one officer half of the time to the rest of the time checking that whole flight um, for and, lots of paperwork. And they check every single person and they go through all your papers. and then All your Canadian papers. Your Canadian, yeah, your Canadian papers. So, so they so it took them, I mean, basically the flight was delayed by two hours until takeoff. So it took two and a quarter hours then. If you say it only opened up at 15 minutes um, prior to takeoff. So that, I don't know, there's some delay then on that end already. Mm, there anyway, was, but there I mean, was. we sat there and sat there and sat there and it was going incredibly slow. So it was really frustrating to actually, and we were worried that we were gonna, they were gonna cancel the flight because they said if the flight's delayed more than two hours, they actually have to cancel the flight. So, uh, but they managed to pull us through. And you know, we, almost, we, yeah. we follow this trick we don't stand in the queue <laughs> so, so because was, you would have been standing there. You've got a seat booked already. Yeah. We didn't stand in the queue for two hours. You would have stand for you. We, to, yeah. we, you would have stood there for two hours. Two hours. So yeah. we sat nicely, and the kids were running up and down the emptying aisles because everyone was standing on the queue, and we went in very last. And you know what? We still made it. They wouldn't have not let us on. Yeah. And um, so actually, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, yeah. So, okay, so, so the eligibility papers, you, or the travel exemption at least. So, so I've got a work permit and I think that qualifies me. She has a travel visitor's visa, visitor's visa and one of our children has a visitor's visa and the other two, two study permits. And then, but you then applied for travel exemption. So mm. you go online and you, you fill in a little form there 
and then they send you an email saying okay you're exempt and you may may fly so print that letter of authorization yeah. to travel in COVID if you're still yeah. traveling in COVID um, because they check that they check your vaccination um, status um, at no no they don't they don't they check, your, no, check not your vaccination they check your COVID test yes they check your COVID you, test obviously That's you, right. you, need your a negative, test. you need a negative COVID test before yes. you can get on yeah so they check that and then they check if you had arrived can already the app filled in with a receipt number so when you get your receipt number see to it that you have your um your barcode your qr code on it there's no qr code i couldn't find the qr code but apparently there know. is because in in canada they asked us on on vancouver airport yeah, to scan I that i looked at that email again there's no qr code there. no qr code no, there's no, i don't know i don't anyway, know how that works anyway but, but, but print that that's good yeah so okay so Okay, so, so, so finally we get on the plane yeah we fly over and now we fly now okay so now you take off at uh meant to be 11 so we took off at one yes that's right uh, one two. O two o'clock one o'clock two o'clock somewhere there okay anyway two hours late and then two hours later in the same day you arrive in vancouver but you've traveled for 10 hours <laughs> so <laughs> basically funny. so basically you're flying with the sun and that's horrible jet lag galore it's crazy so we uh yeah so we got to vancouver and then it was that was amazing so vancouver airport was fantastic fantastic it was absolutely fantastic so it wasn't overly full yeah it was actually pretty quiet to be honest they Except, fast tracked us because we are a family with yeah. traveling with kids so you go down a whole different queue and and with COVID, you, they want everyone to check in their own um, passport. So there's a self-service station. You scan your passport. You scan in if you had a QR code. You scan that in with your arrive can. Then you put your fingerprints down. You do have face recognition, and then you go to the right in front of the queue um, for passport control, and they help you immediately. It was amazing. And at immigration office, <coughs> everyone was standing in four double rows. And they said, you with kids, please come out. They have had us seated in the front, we're in the living room. I'm calling it the, it's a seated area, but it looks amazing and it's clean. <laughs> it's clean. It's clean. And, and they, ha uh, they handed our, they asked us for our passports and our letters, our, our letters. The ones, our, the ones the, you the printed. The visa and the work <laughs> letters that you printed. Um, and then they gave it to an officer to, to do you next. So yeah. that was amazing. So yeah, so and, and that took about... How long did it take? An hour or two or three? Yes, and that was after you had collected your baggage. And the other amazing relieving thing when you come from South Africa was that you park you, all of your baggage onto a trolley and you just park it in a designated area and everything's there when you get there. Yeah, nothing is Even taken. after having waited <laughs> half an hour, an hour, hour and a half, it's safe. Yeah, so... You just collected it again. Yeah, so then... Yeah, so they, they processed our visas and then one by one you could see the guy take our passport and... He prints a thing and he fetches on the other side and then you get a so i got a work permit which is a letter basically with a stamp and a embossed sign and all that sort of stuff and you guys all have visitors and study visas or permits and uh then we could exit the, the and then airport. we could exit the airport and oh so so we we're we're exempt from the quarantine because we got the vaccination and our kids obviously didn't get the vaccination but they are under 12 years old. under age. 12 so the same rules apply to them so all of us basically are exempt from from quarantine and there are some guidelines and rules that you need to follow um like you can't go to group meetings and public spaces where it's very crowded yeah you know, that sort of thing and when you take them out you need to have them wear masks and that sort of thing um, but other than that um, we don't have to quarantine which is amazing mm. Which is absolutely amazing. So, yeah, so now we're out of Vancouver Airport. I ship my bikes, I ship my, all my luggage. So, maybe let's talk about the luggage. Ooh. So, so we. Guaranteed you will not be traveling with the same amount of luggage. I don't know. I think you would. I don't know. It depends on it's who. So it depends on, anyway, so we took so much luggage. So, we got, we got three kids and, uh, Obviously, me and my wife, I wanted to have some work clothes. And we expect that we're not going to get our, our shipping, our container, for maybe three or four months. So... We had to pack winter clothes and summer yeah, clothes. Yeah, because in the time, by the time we get that shipping container, it's, it's close to middle winter. 
and then we wanted yeah. to be able to ride our bikes because it's still summer here yeah. and it's something nice to do for the kids Especially and it's all kids. around you mm. so we ended up taking three um bicycle boxes but we managed the kids helped us um, so, but to get, we had to get two taxis to drive us yeah so we had two taxis back to back um maybe i'll put a snippet in here of just showing you the luggage that i went with but uh Basically, so, so like I said earlier, I'm in renewable energy and we figured out that the battery box, so, so KLM has a, a, a way to calculate the, the size of your check baggage. So X plus Y plus Z or length plus height, but width or whatever has to be um, 158 centimeters or less. And we figured out two of those boxes on top of each other is 157 centimeters. So it's like the perfect thing. And uh, the other thing is we didn't want to sit with, uh, we flew seven bags. So we don't, I don't want to sit with seven empty bags once I've unpacked all my stuff. And know. they'll cost a pretty penny. We only have one international yeah. bag. It's really expensive to buy yeah. an international bag. But what do you do with this stuff? Now you've got seven empty bags that you've got to put in your storage somewhere, you know, in your basement or your attic or whatever. Like. Anyway, so the battery boxes, I think is a great plan. Um, or the cardboard boxes. You could probably use like soft bags as well. We considered that at the stage to get soft bags. I would just wrap it really well. We got it pallet wrapped um, with like a, a fine, um, like a, thin plastic like a wrap. Cling wrap yeah. We got it wrapped. Um, and even with that, the boxes, I mean, some of the bikes did break through the boxes. But, yeah. So they get handled. The bicycles was they actually. Got handled roughly. Yeah, the bicycles was actually quite scary. So the bicycles, I, I, I flew three big bicycle boxes and uh i mean the bike bicycles are expensive and you know you don't want to throw them around and those things by the time just the short flight from cape town to johannesburg the handlebar was sticking out of the one and something sticking out the side so um i wasn't quite happy with that and then i had them wrapped again in johannesburg before they went to an international flight but then when they got to vancouver they actually were in pretty good nick they were yeah they, were. they weren't they weren't really it looks like the south african airline abused them way more than the international KLM airline maybe not who knows by the look of the boxes i think <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway um, can i can i put something in yes we were so glad that we booked a place to stay after the flight arriving internationally at vancouver very close to where yeah. to, to the airport in the end um we were tired the kids were dead tired um and and it was a a short distance to travel and pay for a taxi especially if you had to take mm. two to do your luggage and we just chilled there for two days um it was a very nice place um and then from then on we were a little bit more rested and yeah. we could travel further yeah so so our first stay so we booked two nights so we got there about three o'clock two o'clock three o'clock in vancouver and then we went through immigration we got out the airport maybe five o'clock what do you think five, yes, five, five. five o'clock ish in the afternoon and then <clears throat> right outside the airport i got two taxis two minivan taxis and they took us but our place to stay was i think it was about 12 or 12 or so minutes away from the airport so like Ina said it was so convenient just to have a place to get to close enough not too expensive the taxi ride to get there and um and then we could sleep so we had beds <laughs> except that when you're a mother you realize everyone's got to eat just something and we packed loads of snack snacks for the flight, which is really great because everywhere everyone gets um, hungry and iffy and emotional. So you just give them a snack. But however, everyone ne needed to get a supper in as well before we got to bed. And our landlady was really good to drive me. She was so kind. She drove me just, I mean, it was just five minutes drive. But if I had to take a bus or walk there, it would have been 10 minutes shopping another half an hour maybe if i was good at it but you don't know where anything in the shop is or what it costs anyway so um it was good because you have to keep that in mind if you've got to quarantine it's good to load the save on food app on your phone because they're everywhere in vancouver and they do deliver mm. so um, one could get that delivered if you can't get out or if you don't want to get out mm. um, i'm sure you could do just take out or delivery as well if you want no, if, you, if you're in a hotel then obviously they, mm. they'll cater for you as well yeah. if you get to the hotel in an acceptable hour where they still offer room yeah. service sometimes my friend says sometimes they've arrived there you know at a very late hour and it's closed all the restaurants mm. are closed yeah so so we're 
incredibly fortunate and grateful that we don't have to quarantine because I mean one of our friends was sitting in Ireland and they're sitting in a small little hotel room with no the... windows for 10 <laughs> no, days 10 days and then our other family member that went over there in Montreal and they're in there for 14 days mm -hmm. 14 days in the hotel in the room you got to stay in the room that's ah, that's mental i can't even imagine how that'll be not with three kids yeah maybe on your own you but they've got they've got one kid and a, and a, and a baby yeah, right? just one baby yeah. anyway okay, okay. <laughs> all right so 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 let's maybe talk about our accommodation so accommodation was a big was a big headache um so we're we're coming to the island which is vancouver island or west of vancouver and um it's a very popular tourist destination it's a summer vacation destination and it's uh middle of summer and it's right in the school holiday still and uh they've just opened up the the borders for travel and said tourism you know people can travel in in the country and, and so on and i think the u.s travelers can come now as well mm. i think so so when we booked our flights we started looking for accommodation and we could not find anything if i say nothing I, I, I mean literally nothing there was not a single option available so uh it, it was a bit of a headache now you know we, we're coming but we don't have a place to stay so uh, that was that was a bit of a worry and then finally what i what i did then is i said okay if we're not if we can't book, book one continuous place let's at least start looking for shorter dates and see if we can stitch together a few things so we i took the the date we were arriving and then we got those two nights in vancouver and then on the sunday we traveled to the island which that's also actually quite an interesting story and then so from the sunday basically i looked at that date and i said okay minimum a lot of places on airbnb have minimum three night stays so i took three nights from there and then you go through the list you see something you like and then i go on to that specific place and then i see how long they actually have available and then I sort of decide how long I want to stay in that place. And then I take the next date from the end of that one and I try and figure out another place. So eventually we stitched together seven different places. In the uh, first month. In the first month. So so we're moving around quite a lot. We're sitting on, on the outside of our first, our first place on the island right now. And uh, yeah, so tomorrow we move again. But we've been here five days. So um, four days, five days, four. and uh, we've been here four. We'll be here five in total, and it's beautiful. The kids have enjoyed running around, climbing trees, making friends, and we'll we'll be staying all around the town that we've we've moved to. So in the end, it's it's like a month vacation. Yeah, and we test drive sort of every little neighborhood around. Yeah. We get the feel of living downtown in the town. We get a feel of living outside the town. We get a feel of living way more outside the town. So um, I think all in all, it's actually fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be great fun. Yeah. So so basically, it's 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 how your your mindset is and how you approach this. I think and and we we after we sort of said okay, we well, we're going to stay in seven different places. We said okay, it's, we're going to have to approach this like a holiday. So yeah, it's a it's one going, month it's a one month holiday we're moving around it's like camping here camping there you get to experience all the different neighborhoods and all the different things yeah we managed to get a little <laughs> rental for two to three months from a month in and that that proved to be a very good thing to have because we have that address to put down mm. for bank accounts and things like that so if you can manage something really small even if it's just a little in the future um, that's a good plan because everywhere you go and everything you register for, they want an address. But I remember last time when we came to Canada, we gave the address of the International Student Association in Vancouver oh, really? for things. I remember seeing that. And that was sufficient as well because they, they were in contact with us even though we weren't necessarily on the premises. But they, they it was a company that that sort of just looked after us. And I think so that was sufficient. They forward all their mail to you. I think. That's right. Yeah, I think that's so. what they did. But, but that's on the student visa that we had ten years ago. Mm. So um, maybe let's end off on what is your experiences so far. My experience so far that that's, that stands out is that um, we're surrounded with unadulterated nature. It's quiet. 
it's very relaxing where we are that's good and the flight went much better than i expected with three kids um and it was very helpful uh, the way people helped us Your experience in canada in canada yeah what, what's canada like for you after one week oh okay okay um uh, the nature is amazing and as i said unadulterated and um and then the other thing is i've had beautiful sincere conversations with people who are, are sincerely helpful and very friendly um and genuinely interested in um welcoming you to the island so that's my experience i'm not saying that's every canadian around but that's definitely who i've met in this neighborhood mm. so i okay my experience mm -hmm. is uh it is it is probably the i mean it's the most beautiful place that i've ever lived in or been to more beautiful than even um even uh Österreich. Austria. 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 Um, I would say it's probably the same as the countryside in Austria. Yeah, yeah. Austria. Austria is also super pretty. Yeah, very pretty. But uh, it's just forest where we are. It's forest everywhere. Um, there's ocean. I mean, I took my first day of or my second day on the job. We went to um, one of the islands, and uh, we had to take a ferry ride, and then we took another boat ride across, and then we did some work, and then we took a boat ride back and another boat ride back. And it's just beautiful summer on the water. It's it's amazing. It's like it's like it's ridiculously beautiful. And um, the other thing that stood out for me is how efficient the people are mm -hmm. and how competent they are. Um, you know, most people can help you with the right information and the right answers straight away. Um, and things just get done and get solved. They just work. Um, and they're friendly. And they're friendly, yeah. And they're, they're friendly and competent. And it's, it's, it's just, just mm. I mean, compared to our experiences back home for like getting government papers, this is day and night. It's like, I mean, no, it's, really it's good. not even on the same planet. I mean, you know, trying to get something from our home affairs office versus, you know, trying and getting it done here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm at the moment, I'm incredibly happy. Can I add to that that there was, um, there was an official. They get someone, an official from ca the Canadian government to phone you as well. So they have phoned Andres and they have phoned me and asked if, if there's something they can help us with or um, whether it's going well with us. Um, that is so helpful. And if they couldn't help us, they gave us a number to phone. They directed us to a website. So even on government level, um, they and everyone is... is, is um, they're not intimidating in their approach of trying to help you. They are really friendly. It sounds like someone who cares, who phones you. They really care. They really care. It feels like they care. <laughs> but they're really friendly. <laughs> I've said that before. Mm, okay. Um, anyway, so we're, we're blown away at this stage of just mm. how well things work here and how pretty it is. And yeah, we're excited. Okay. The other nice thing is that every, there are fast rules about everything. So I've um, I've already will will do another <clears throat> info session on things. But every everywhere you go, if you speak to the right people, um, they help you to get registered with schools. Um, there, there's like a, a definite way of doing things. It's not something in the air. Um, get res registered this way, this place, in this way, and so on. So it's um all set out you just have to follow the path and they will help you on it as well if you lose the way yeah okay okay it's long enough i hope you enjoyed it okay <laughs> cheers we'll see you next time Bye. so we'll do a tour of the tiny house which is our first accommodation in on the island i'll do that next okay cool bound to be interesting bye bye